You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Ready to stand out, Army ROTC prepares you not only as a college student, but as a strong leader, allowing you to earn the rank of second lieutenant. You will be eligible for full tuition, merit-based scholarships, and develop leadership skills essential for your future. Start strong and enhance your college experience. Visit your campus Army ROTC representative today. To find out how you can earn up to a full tuition scholarship, visit GoArmy.com slash podcast to locate your closest ROTC program today. Army officers inspire strength in others. Paid for by the United States Army. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I only have a certain budget. No problem. Right now at the LASIK Vision Institute, get 20% off LASIK when treated in April. That can be over $900 off when treating both eyes, plus guaranteed financing options. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your journey towards 2020 vision. Must mention this promotion and be treated in April of 2024 to qualify. 20% off standard price of wave light procedure cannot be combined with any other offers. Go to GetLVILASIK.com for details. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I'm so busy right now. We offer a mix of convenient days and times, including 30-minute virtual appointments to fit your schedule. I would love it, but I have astigmatism. We treat thousands of patients with astigmatism every month with great outcomes. The LASIK Vision Institute is making your journey towards 2020 vision all about you. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your LASIK journey. I am Conor McGregor, multiple weight MMA champion. I'm a fighter and I've been through many battles in the octagon. Many consider my fights in the octagon heroic, but the real life heroes are those men and women who fight to protect us every day. The real life fighters, the real life heroes, are the firefighters and police officers. These first responders are true heroes because these brave men and women put themselves in the line of danger every single day protecting us all. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation ensures that first responders from fire, EMS and police departments who are killed in the line of duty with young children have a home without the burden of a mortgage. They are my heroes. They need our help today. I'd like to ask you to join me in donating $11 a month to support their efforts. Your $11 a month honors and supports our first responders. Please call now at 1-844-BRAVEST or visit tunneltotowers.org. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up. Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandra, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I know karate, I know jiu-jitsu, I drive like a gay, so when I'm coming to see you, see you. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised.
It is Wednesday, my dude. Otherwise known as Chat Live is Matter Night right here live on KLRRadio.com. I am one half of the crew, Mr. Rick Robinson. She's the other half, Miss Daisy Lennox. And man, do we have things to talk about today. I think we have so much stuff, we kind of need a longer show. <laughs> anyway, so we're here. Remember when we're we used to do like two hours in the morning? Yeah, yeah, we used to do that. Yeah. You know, if you weren't a vampire the now, we could... flu spew. If you weren't a vampire, Probably, we could probably the best day. show name I've ever had. Yeah, I have to admit, that one was fun. You know, we're still getting clicks that off was, of that, that, by the that way. That was a great name. Yes, it was. We're still getting clicks off of that, by the way. Are we? Yeah, we had like 40 listens last month on the archives. I was kind of surprised. I pulled the numbers and I was like, dude, we had 40 listens on this thing? We haven't done that show since, what, 2022? <laughs> 2021? Because I think we rebranded yeah. in 2021. And then, and yeah, I mean, even Daily Dose is still getting some clicks. I was like, maybe we should, you know, if you weren't a vampire, I'd be like, we should do the morning show again. <laughs> then I could just do my solo afternoon show. <laughs> oh, I could do a morning show a couple days a week. Other days of the week, it would be, um, <laughs> Stacey, it would be rough. Stacey, <laughs> it'd be Stacy snoring and Rick talking. Uh, well, it, it wouldn't be me snoring. It would be me like, <laughs> so wait. So what? What would it would be? It would be hangry, tired, Stacy. I don't know. Uh, angry Stacy usually sells, so we might review. No, that. hangry. Yeah, that's I... totally different. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I'm just being facetious. I just toss you a Snickers like, bar before we go on the air. Be like, fine. bitch, get a Snickers. That's what I just said. I just tossed you a Snickers bar before we went on the air. You'd be fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, bitch, eat a Snickers. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. Uh, so, uh. You caught me after I was straining milk kefir grains and feeding a ginger bug and <laughs> putting some new plants downstairs. So, yeah. Woohoo. I feel like I'm doing the intro to my show with Al. But, yeah, I got dirt under my fingernails, feeling pretty froggy. That's all right. I did like a whole segment today on whole milk. So, you know, I, I think I think we're starting to cross Raw the milk? streams. Yeah, raw milk. Yeah, I meant raw milk. I said yeah, milk. tastes but, like butter. <laughs> yeah, so the Blaze apparently put out an expose about you know the the fact that if you look at it statistically, more people have died from drinking pasteurized milk than raw milk. That is actually true. <laughs> oh, I know it was kind of creepy. Like ah, eh. but yeah, I mean, and 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 they went into some pretty big details talking about it too. They're like, look, pasteurization made sense in the 1900s because we didn't have early 1900s. 1800s, 1900s, because we didn't have access to refrigeration, etc. Now we do. It really doesn't make any sense anymore. And if you compare... Well, I've actually start, taken to something, getting something I can get easily um, stocked in one of the local grocery stores, which is low-temp pasteurized. So it's still it's as close as you're going to get to raw milk that they'll actually sell in a chain grocery store. I can get raw milk at the local stores, but it's only there certain days a week because it's several local small producers. Yeah. So if I miss it, I can always get the low temp. And the low temp, I can still make – it's still got the cream on top. It's not homogenized, none of that stuff. Um, but it's sold at Sprouts here locally. Um, so I can still do that. But I was talking to another friend today, and I'm sitting here, and I'm fermenting my own yogurt and – I'm making my own sourdough and I'm doing all this stuff and figuring out you have to use organic flour because they spray chemicals all over to dry it. So non-GMO doesn't mean anything. And I get blasted all the time on Twitter by Monsanto bros for saying this stuff, um, which is fine. I'm like, hey, drink it. You can drink some glycosate for all I care. Have your kids bathe in it. I don't want it. (laughs) Like, I'm not calling to outlaw it. I'm just avoiding it in my life. Okay, so I'm doing all this stuff and I'm talking to somebody, a lot of you in the chat know, Judiana, and I'm like, when did the right become like the whole natural food people? <laughs> when did this happen? I'm, when did we become like the hippy dippy? No, I'm telling you, when, when we went <laughs> when we went counterculture, we went all in on counter, counterculture. I'm just saying. Yeah, I know. Like, we're, we're all there. No fucking vaccines. Like, raw milk. Like, like, I want Trump to actually go out and like, not just unleash energy, but unleash ag, independent ag, independent producers. Like, why can I make food for my family every night and kill no one 
but I can't make small batch sourdough and sell it at my girlfriend's grocery store. Why can't I do that? Because people are Why do I have to have an FDA fucking kitchen? Oh, because you want me to pay you money and you want to be able to find me. That's bullshit. This is this is pretty much every I mean that's part of the reason why we're making some of the changes that we're making. Here starting in June, our live streams are going to be on Live 365 because I'm tired of paying $1200 a year for three different types of music licenses that still get me dinged on every platform including Spreaker. Even though I've shown them the licensing over and over and over again because everything the government does is money. That's it. Every, and the FCC has figured out even though internet radio isn't regulated, they can still ding the hell out of you if you're using music unless you use a recognized platform because even though I've shown over and over and over again that we have, because we do now, we have ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, all of the above, all the ones that cover pretty much everything in North, North America except for the little two Canadian fuckers that I don't give a shit about. Um, and we've had that for over a year because I, I went in with my last tax return and I bought... All three licenses for a year because I was tired of getting emails from the dude that does the religious show and is like, they keep telling me that we don't have the right licensing for the music that I have. I was like, well, now we have all three. So I send him those and I send them to I send them to YouTube, I send them to Spreaker, I send them to everybody. We have the rights to use this music. We are paying for the rights to use this music. And we still get deboosted, flagged, copyright infringements all of the above through all these platforms because it's all done through AI. So I'm just done. I'm, I'm giving up on that fight. We're going to do a live stream that is covered, and then we're going to edit the podcast so there's no music in there because I'm tired of having to fight copyrights every other day because I plan on actually starting to, once I get some stuff squared away, I'm going to start promoting the afternoon show here locally because there's no live local content at all anymore during the time frame that I'm doing the afternoon show. So I'm going to start trying to push it. And the last thing I need, well, do you have your licensing yet? Yes, shut up. <laughs> I'm just, I just, but, but it just goes back to everything. Everything's about control. I mean, that's part of what I talked about today. The, the government, everything the government does is, 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 is under the guise of trying to keep you safe is actually trying to kill you. Everything they allow you to eat in a grocery store can kill you if you eat enough of it. Most of the stuff that you are authorized by the FDA to put into your bodies can kill you if you eat enough of it. But it's there's another reason for that. They want us unhealthy because then we get involved in the revolving door of medicine. And then they want us fat and complacent so we can't fight when they do stupid shit. So there, there's all kinds of things that are going on that nobody wants to talk about. And I, I, think, I've, I think I've pretty much decided I'm just wearing my tinfoil hat all the time now. <laughs> And I, I don't even know that it's that, like, coordinated. I just think the oh, agencies are so captured that people in the FDA and the USDA and all that eventually want to go and get jobs at Hormel and Pfizer. So the agencies just come become completely captured because there's no regulation on if you're going to lead an agency, you can't go to work for the people you regulate for a certain period of time or you can't own stock in the people you're regulating or whatever um so the corruption is just rampant i so I, I will say I this all of these things are like a, a, a an eventuality that that causes that it wasn't necessarily deliberate but now they're playing off it I will say like they that, realized uh, the consequences of what they did. Wait a minute, we can work this to our advantage. Uh, I will say this. I honestly think it's about as well coordinated as all the Hamasnik protests that have popped up on Monday. I'm not saying. Oh say- my God! Can I just say I'm so tired of these people. <laughs> I I just really want. Like, there's like 1,500 of them, and they just keep busting them around the country. Well, I mean, like, so. They- so an in- interesting split screen um, yesterday, which which I was kind of amazed by. Uh, and then something else that actually happened today that's tied to the same stuff. So Joe Biden has spent three days in Pennsylvania pretty much the whole time while Donald Trump has been stuck in a courtroom. So yesterday they showed Joe Biden heading to an event. And, of course, he's got the usual Hamas nicks, you know, genocide Joe, blah, 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 blah. So then after the hearing when Donald Trump was free for the day, he went to the bodega where that dude – actually had to kill a robber and then the same DA that's coming after him tried to charge the dude that was committing self-defense with committing murder um, who actually has left the country now that he's been freed and he's like fuck you guys I'm just going to go back to the Dominican Republic you can all kiss my ass Um, so he's leaving that bodega yesterday and I saw something I never thought I would see 
in in my life, honestly, if I'm being completely 100% honest, except for maybe Reagan, if Reagan had ever done it, and if he did it, I, I was so little, I don't remember. He's walking out of a bodega in Harlem, and people are chanting Trump four more years, and there's, like, people everywhere that are just, I'm just like, I, he's in the middle of Harlem. I thought he was supposed to, I thought, I thought, I thought, thought he was supposed to be this horrible evil racist dude and everybody's like chanting his name and shouting four more years i'm so confused right now it was a weird split screen i'm just saying <laughs> weird split screen <sighs> but then today taking this a step further um he's still he's in uh, he was in scranton yesterday i don't remember what part of pennsylvania he's in today but he had so he's in with the, the unions uh the the steel union which first of all He's pushing the idea for Chinese tariffs. When the last guy did it, it was racist. I'm trying to figure out why it's not racist now. Um, but according to Joe, China's cheating, so he's trying to level the playing field. I'm like, you know what the last guy said? And he was called a racist. But take it a step further. So the same Hamasnik crowd is still out there. Genocide Joe got to go, all that stuff. Then there's another <laughs> another protest from across the street. And you would think it would be pro-Israel. No, it's anti-Bidenomics. So now he has dual protesting. About two different big issues for him, all going outside of one of his supposed bigger events when it's really just a union hall. Can I just built. tell you, <laughs> the DNC uh, convention is in Chicago. It's going to be fucking lit. It's going to make 1968 <laughs> look like look like a, I don't know a preschool play. Like I don't know. It, it's going to be such a mess. Such I mean. A mess. You know, if they're not careful, it may actually be lit. I'm just saying. I don't know. Like, what are you going to do to stop it? I don't know. The Democrats do not squash these protesters because those protesters are their shock troops, right? Yeah. yeah. Their shock troops are blocking the Golden Gate Bridge. Their shock troops are going to city council meetings and threatening to kill people if Bakersfield City Council won't demand a ceasefire like that means anything you know they, they're outside amazon now and other like companies demand a ceasefire because israel's gonna do what because amazon tells them to like what what are you even people talking about dude there's like a hundred um, there's like 175 amazon protesters out of like a million and a half and i'm just thinking fire them all but whatever and then google i, I know but all i'm saying is that they're using like the left has lost the thread and they're using this conflict to do their usual corporate pressure campaign and everything else when it just doesn't even make any sense. So the average American is watching this and going, what are you even doing? Like I have people like that don't follow politics. Like why are they asking Amazon? Israel's its own country. Yeah. Like everybody else can see the thread except these insane far left protesters. And so if all of these insane far left protesters show up in Chicago, what the Democrats are going to squish them all of a sudden? They've been pandering to him since 2020. And then since the George Floyd riots. Yeah, I mean they've been pandering to them for a long time, but I think the mo the most interesting take that I've heard so far cuz you know, it's not just Amazon, it's Google too, but there's like 300 of them out of like however many Google employees there are. And apparently they weren't just sitting outside. A big group of those people went and like tried to barnstorm the CEO's office and took it over and I'm just like, yeah, every single one of you fuckers would be fired. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't understand why yeah, anybody no. puts like, up with this crap. You, you show up in in the boss's office telling them how to run the company, you're gone. Yeah. Like, this is not your job. Go do your job. Yeah. I have my job. You have your job. Stay in your fucking lane. That's pretty much where we are. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but, yeah. No, I mean, well, I mean, that's actually a fairly common thing, especially for – and it's not just it, – it, it. I've noticed it's kind of cropped up with – people from about 80, 84, as far as 1984, because I have a couple of friends that work in security that every time, and, and this, this happens a lot because, you know, this is part of what I used to do. So they'll be like, well, I got let go because I told the boss that I didn't think he should be doing this, and I don't think I didn't think he should be doing that. I was like, yeah, if you talk to me that way when you're working for me, I would have fucking fired you too. <laughs> you don't tell the boss what you think the boss should do. You make suggestions, and if the boss wants to take them, then they take them. But you don't just go, well, we need to do things this way. Is it your company? Is, your name, is it your name on the license? Did you do all the work to get it? No, then shut up. I, I just don't understand the, the entitlement because I honestly thought it was mostly, you know, 
maybe 90s babies forward, but I'm noticing a lot of 80s kids have the same mindset. And I was like, we aren't that separated from one another. How, where, where did where did we lose the plot within about seven years? Because I just don't get it. I just don't get it. But it's it's just, it's nuts. The, the entire world is nuts. The entire world is upside down. And I still blame CERN because they fired up the freaking collider again on Eclipse Day last week. So I still blame them. What kind of, what kind of evil is that? <laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, j- just just to put this in perspective, last, I think it was last Monday when we had the, the full eclipse for most of the country. We also had um, something, it was something with the name Devil in it. It was a comet. It was like the Devil's Tail Comet or something coming by at the same time. And they fired off the Hadron Collider again. I'm just like, if that's not like trying to do a three convergence kind of thing just to see if you can make the world end, I really don't know what it, what is. Um, and then, you know, you had the whole thing with Israel popping off over the weekend. And then, irony of ironies, Fallout dropped the Thursday before we just about wound up officially in World War Three. So I thought that was a little weird. But anyway. <laughs> it's like, I missed that bomb. I must have been sleeping. There are, way, there, are way, there, there are way too many convergences happening for Iran and Israel to be throwing shit at each other. But this time it was Iran. Well, <laughs> but it, 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 so I hear tell that through Turkey... The U.S. was informed Iran was going to do this, and the Biden administration basically greenlit it within limits. Uh huh. Yeah, same, same same thing they did with Russia, basically. Well, so, the, well, like you're watching things go over the border, and we're paying for both sides of it. We're paying for the side launching the bombs, and we're paying for the side deflecting the bombs. Yeah, that, that's the irony of irony. Is like everything everything that happened on Saturday night we paid for. <laughs> I, I like tell me what we think. I don't know what we think anymore. I don't think they know what they think. Like it only took 19 terrorists to execute 9-11. Uh-huh. And we have at least... We have at least 700 known terrorists oh. in the country that have crossed the southern border at this point. You saw a different number than I did, because the last one I saw I thought was like 400 and something, so that scares me even more. Um, but okay, no, the last one I heard was the uh, high end of six hundred, close to seven hundred. Yeah. So, but that's just known. We have no idea what the unknowns are. Like that guy that came over the border who said, "You will now know my name." He's not a known terrorist, but oh, yeah. he's a terrorist. Oh yeah, he's definitely a terrorist. So, like, it's just the known ones that we know we're on a watch list. Oh yeah, I so, mean, there are probably Israel literally thousands. Froggy, what do you think is going to happen? Oh, they, they they've already got plans, my dude. I'm just telling you, they've already got oh, plans. Oh, see, I I have I have in my brain a way this whole thing's going to roll out. Well, do tell, do tell. Oh, it's ugly. I don't think people want to be having nightmares tonight. Uh, I mean, I'm just saying, this is kind of what we do. We tell them what we think and let them sort it out. Okay, I don't think we're going to get into nuclear conflict because the Russians don't want to die and the Chinese don't want to die. Yeah, I don't know if I believe. I don't know if I. I mean, there, there might going. be some tacticals thrown, but we're not. We're not bombing the Pentagon and vaporizing everything. Yeah, but if you, I, I just don't. I, I just don't believe that. If you get the terrorists involved, you have no control over what they do. <laughs> well, yeah, but I suitcase there's nukes are a thing. There's some ones out there that scare me a little bit. But anyway, okay. So, so here's what we what. I don't think they're taking over nuclear facilities. What I think is they are going to foment mass chaos sometime late summer before the election when things are getting really heated. Um, you are going to see a couple of major attacks in major cities across the U.S. That's going to cause chaos within the cities. And while all attention is turned into multiple cities to deal with the chaos that those attacks have done, they're going to move to the suburbs. I agree with you. But, mm-hmm. uh, but, and they're going to start attacking schools and hospitals out there. But I'm going to take it a step further. I think this will be the jumping off point that Joe Biden uses to never leave office until they have to carry him out. Well, whoever runs Joe Biden, I don't know that Joe Biden will be doing it. Oh, well, I mean, we already know that it's not Joe Biden. I mean, O'Keefe bro- broke a whole 20 minute video today explaining that it's not Joe Biden. <laughs> Really? I, I gotta go back and watch that. Was it good? Yeah. I Who mean, was he talking to now? I, did he did he LARP did he LARP did he go on Tinder to do it again? I don't I don't know. Or not I, Tinder. I did, he, I, did he go on Grinder to do it again? Was another gay guy who thought he was going on a date? I don't I I didn't really pay that much attention to as far as the interactions, just was listening to what he said. Oh, okay. But, but yeah, basically so, the last one was definitely a gay dude who thought he was on a date. 
Yeah, so according, so since it is a 15 minute or an 18 minute video, I don't really plan on playing the whole the thing, but um, just to give everybody kind of the gist, because he actually summarized it first. Um, O'Keefe Media uncovers who was really running the White House. Undercover cameras catch special advisor uh, who call, uh, who was a former Facebook member. Um, and I can't read their, I can't read their ads for shit. SBA gov. I don't know what that is. Um, but the, the second most powerful person in Washington where whatever this guy says is what the president does. Um, it, he says it, it, it's Jeff something. He says his name in the clip, but I didn't, when I heard it earlier, I think it was already playing. I didn't realize it was that long. Hang on. Let's at least, I think he says the name. Okay, so what, what's your title? Like special advisor. I work for the chief staff. Like Oh, you report to the chief of staff. Yeah. So author's the chief of staff to Guzman. Yeah, this is going to be smart. So she's basically a spokesperson for Biden. Yeah. She's indirectly campaigning for Biden. Yes. Yeah. Administrator Guzman said basically are, are doing, going to these critical battleground states yeah. to basically campaign for President yeah. Biden. Anytime we go, we try to visit with a member of Congress if they're a Democrat. The okay. White House is like, yes, go. Don't invite the other senator because he's a Republican. Yeah. Don't invite the two members of Congress because they're a Republican. Uh, this guy named Jeff Sainz. I mean, by getting Zep, Jeff sign off, you're getting the president to sign off. People call him, like, the second most powerful person in Washington. Most times, like, hey, whatever the size this guy says is what the president says. Who would you say is the most powerful person at the White House? Jeff. Jeff is the most powerful person at the White House. Other than, like, the president. There's probably, like, five or six people that work for him. Alright, so in case you couldn't make out the name, he keeps saying the name over and over again. Jeff Zeintz is apparently some Yeah, sort of, he's the chief of staff. Yeah, so apparently it's the chief of staff running the country with a side of Barack and Hillary, by the way. In case you thought they were out of the mix, they're not. Cause Hillary- yeah, he, um, hang on. He served as a counselor to the president and he was the White House coronavirus response coordinator before that. I knew I knew him from COVID. Um. So he was big in censoring all the dissenting points of view and all of that kind of stuff. And now, so he was the counselor to the president. He was the coronavirus response coordinator. And now he succeeded Ron Klain as White House chief of staff. So he's been in Biden world for a long, long time. Um, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's one thing to know that it's not Joe in charge. It's another thing. He was also a member of Facebook's board of directors from 2018 to 2020. Yeah, that didn't seem shady at all. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, anyway. Oh, he worked. He worked with Mitt Romney at Bain. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the Obama administration, he was with OMB. Um. As the performance manager and acting director of OMB. He um, was part of the healthcare.gov launch when they were asked to fix it. Then he was on the National Economic Council through 2017. Um, And in 2015, he supported the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which is what um, myself and some other online folks like almost like drove John Bain out of office opposing. (laughs) Oh. We flipped a couple of people on the day of the vote <laughs> and he had to like change the rules to get it passed. So that was actually really fun. Um, so yeah, uh, he, and he's been in the Biden, uh, Biden sphere. So after being in the Obama administration, he's been in the Biden sphere since, uh, summer of 2020. Um, so he, he's a direct emissary from a world Obama into the chief of staff for Biden. So if we want to know who's really running the office of the presidency, if it's Zients, it's really Obama. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, we've suspected that, but it's another thing to actually know that it was the case. <laughs> well, we knew it. Just now we know it. Yeah, it's kind of what I meant. But anyway. Yeah. <sighs> so much fun. But yeah, you know, he, he he was the guy that was going to, you know, bring civility back to the country and stuff. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, no, that was never going to happen. <laughs> uh, too bad, though. It's a good plan. Seemed like it might work. Oh, my God, that's crazy. What? So, do you remember that Bodega 
um, owner who ended up shooting the guy that was beating him and trying to rob him, and Alvin Bragg sent him to Rikers. Yeah, the guy I was just talking about like 10 minutes ago. Oh, you got that? And Trump just went and visited him? Yeah, that happened yesterday. I totally missed that. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, he's like leaving the bodega and people are cheering and he's like walking around and shaking hands and pumping fists. And I thought you were saying Biden was leaving a bodega. No, I said I totally Trump was. Confused. Yeah, no, Biden was in Pennsylvania and getting heckled and Trump was in Harlem okay. and getting cheered. I missed, I missed the transition. <laughs> yeah, because the same thing happened at Chick-fil-A. In Atlanta. <coughs> that was awesome. He goes to Chick-fil-A in Atlanta. Trump is like the only white dude in the restaurant. He's buying everybody chicken and milkshakes. And the employees are all like, we love you, sir. Can I have a hug? I'm voting for you. I mean, Team Biden must be having a freaking heart attack when they see this stuff. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just so weird, though, right? Because that's that's been their whole plan this whole time is get him to the point where he is stuck in a courtroom and he can't campaign campaign. And but the thing that they don't seem to understand is at this point you're talking about two people that have a hundred percent name recognition. For the first time in history, we have two actual presidents with a well, not in history, but in our lifetime, two actual presidents with actual records where you can compare and contrast how things were. So if you take COVID out of the equation Remove Biden's first year, remove Trump's last year, and then you look at where you were taking into account the other three years, everybody's going, yeah, before COVID, shit was kind of cool. So it's it's just – and it's weird because it's like what in the the Georgia thing, no, nobody expected what happened when he walked into that Chick-fil-A in Georgia. And you've got this boi- this boisterous black lady just like, don't believe the media, Mr. Trump. We love you. And I'm like, holy crap. Anyway, I think we lost you for a second. Are you back now? Maybe. Yeah, no, I'm back. I have no idea what happened because I have like five bars. But that was weird. I think it's all Skype's fault. Yeah, it's because we're talking about things they don't like. <laughs> Shut them up! Mm-hmm. They're talking about Trump. Shut them Shut up. up! Shut them down! Shut them down! They can't say nice things about Lord Spray Tan. <sighs> anyway. Well, you know, here's the thing. I don't like him. I didn't want him to be the nominee. Same. <laughs> But then, I still want to cry when I think about it. But then, we have a geriatric rematch. But what I can't stand is the lying. Ugh. So I made a very like just short post the other day, and it went a little bit crazy. I said, so the people that told you Trump was going to tank the economy and start World War III have now tanked the economy and are the first of starting World War III. Hmm. Yeah, funny, funny how that works. Right? <laughs> Oh my God, the flying monkeys in my mentions. I tried to start your hashtag. It didn't work. <laughs> I'm like, uh, all Biden's flying monkeys are out today. Cause of course I'm sleeping in between, in between having made this post. So I wake up and I have a bunch of flying monkeys in my Trump shattered the economy. No COVID shattered the economy, which was a virus from China, which shattered the economy all over the world. And the people who drove that were actually blue state governors and Dr. Fauci. Now, should Trump have fired Fauci? Yes, but you all made him a saint, so that wasn't going to happen in an election year. But yeah, no, Trump didn't ruin the economy. And everybody knows what the economy was in January of 2020. So please stop. You're treating people like they're stupid. Yeah, I actually, I actually, I don't do this very often, but I actually created a list on X, and it's called Biden's Flying Monkeys, and I'm just going through slowly adding people to it. <laughs> Oh yeah, I saw that. So for for those who don't, when 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 I use the term "flying monkey," just because it's kind of a colloquial term thrown around in psychology these days. So just to make sure that everybody knows what I'm talking about when I call somebody a flying monkey, this is a term used for the narcissist support group. So basically, it's all the people in the narcissist circle that have bought their narrative, bought their gaslighting, all of the above. And anytime anybody tries to challenge that narrative, they fly out and just go, no, you don't understand, blah, 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 blah. Having gone through that recently, I fully understand what it's like to have a bunch of flying monkeys. And every time I see all of these people, like the the Krasenstein idiot, fly to Biden's defense, it's the first thing I think of is, oh, my God, he has his own fucking flock of flying monkeys. When you've got Ed Krasenstein trying to justify the fact that Biden showered with his daughter, that's a flying monkey. Because that's gross. As a father of daughters, that is gross. 
Mm -hmm. That is gross. Yeah, there's no way to defend that. Just don't try. You, you, you shouldn't even try. Just leave it alone. And then there's, well, they had a handwriting expert look at that page, and they don't think it was written by her. Uh, that's funny because the lady that stole it is going to jail for stealing it, but she all said it wasn't real in the first place. So why is she going to jail for stealing? And I'm confused. Which one is it? Is it fake or is it real enough that the person who took it gets to go to jail for taking it? Because it kind of seems like it's real enough that the person that took it gets to go to jail for taking it, even though it was technically left behind anyway, which is really confusing. None, none of this makes any sense. But it's, it's what I was about to talk about a second ago. So every time I am pissed off and just like I cannot believe that they have us they're going through Grudge Match 2.0, then I see shit like I saw Monday at the trial where the judge is basically saying, well, if we're still in session, you can't even go to your son's graduation. Yeah, no, that's just insane. I'm like, so wait a minute. First of all, most places that I've ever been to graduation, they usually happen on like a Thursday night, Friday night, sometimes even a Saturday if it's going to be during the day. But it's usually in the evening, which means the court would technically be be out of session if that's the case. So why would the judge have any jurisdiction to tell a man who is not technically in custody where he can go when he's not in the courtroom, for one? For two, do you guys really think that with with everything that we know about Alvin Bragg in this case, that no, that only people are just now really starting to talk about? Like the fact that this man turned down the prosecution the first time as the misdemeanor and said no. But then somebody wrote a book and said bad things about Alvin Bragg. So then he got mad, and then he started trying to figure out how to get creative and rearrange the statute of limitations and bootstrap it into felonies and everything else. And we're looking at all this going... This doesn't even make any sense. This just it's just stupid. You've uh, you've you've basically rewritten the law to go after one specific person, which is the same thing that Letitia James did, and now because of that, all of the real estate investors are pulling the fuck out of New York cuz they're like, "I'm not doing business here anymore." We're, because this is this is the way the practice has always been. If you want to change the practice, change the law. But you can't come after somebody for actually following the law as it's written and how things are done with banks. And and this is the same thing. This is going to be one of those unintended consequences where people are just. I mean, people have already left New York in droves. There's going to be nobody left soon. And then you have Joy Reid, who and and I wanted to pull this audio and forgot. They had Joy Reid last night on her show. With her Trump style hair, which is cultural appropriation, by the way, man. Please change your hair back. Just saying. I know it's a wig. Shut up. Um, but it took, that was to her. But anyway, so she's on her show last night talking about how great DEI is because there's a there's a black attorney general in New York going after Donald Trump. There's a black district attorney in New York City going after Trump. There's a black DA in Georgia going after Trump. So they're all out to get the rich white man, and DEI is winning. That's not exactly what she said, but it might as well be what she said. And hearing people say this makes me sick because it reminds me of what my 99-year-old grandfather, I overheard him say something when I was five that I will never forget. I don't remember when it was, when it, what happened, but we were fishing, and my uncle, my great uncle, was there with us, and something had just happened in the news, and they're talking back and forth with each other. And my great uncle looked at my granddad and said, "If we don't do something, these uppity blankety blanks are going to burn it all down." And I'm sitting here and I'm watching all these people that are doing all these things that are shady as hell, that are people of color, but it's all okay because it's a rich white man. And I'm like, the crazy fucking racists were right. Where, where the hell did we turn into a world where the crazy fucking racists were right? Because that's not how I was raised. I was raised that content of character mattered, not color of skin. When did it get flipped? How did it get flipped? And how do we flip it back? Because I don't want the crazy fucking racist to be to be right. Because this means if we don't wake up soon, we're going to be the, 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 the leftover white people on Twitter screaming about stolen land soon if we still have our heads left. I just don't know how things got as bad as they got when they got as bad as they got, or why it's okay for us to be the victims of hate crimes now, but I don't like it. I didn't like it when it was happening to the other folks. I definitely don't like it when it's happening to me. I tried to do the right thing. Y'all are making me regret it. Because <sighs> actions have consequences. 
And you can't say black people going after rich white dudes is okay. Well, I mean, did you hear some of the craziness that happened when OJ died? Oh, yeah. I, I, I actually had to be nice about it on Twitchy because nobody else wanted to write it. Who knew that being able to write and perform eulogies would be a skill that I could use at Twitchy? <laughs> Well, but not just that. Did you hear that crazy chick that was saying it mattered because OJ could kill two white people and get away with it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. On CNN. Like, what in the fresh hell? <laughs> On CNN, she said the quiet part out loud and then tried to stop. Yeah, I, I know. Like, <laughs> I was like, like, wait, what? <laughs> he was able to kill two white people and, uh, yeah, no, yeah, what, what, what? <laughs> Never mind. And get away with it. Uh I th- I thought they cut her off before she said that part, but I could be misremembering. Somebody got the whole thing. <laughs> but I mean, I'm just like I'm, maybe 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 I was delusional, maybe I was hallucinating, but I'm sure I heard it. Well, no, well, well, how I heard it because well, it was the news like broke right before I went to sleep one day. I don't remember. Did he die Sunday? Uh, no, I think it was. I th- Shit, I don't remember when I wrote it. <laughs> but it was a weekday. Uh, was it? I swear to God, it was... Well, I don't know. But somewhere in my sleepless delusions, I'm like, she said what? <laughs> well, no, so how I heard it, because I didn't actually hear them say it, but I heard somebody else talking about it later, so I don't know if they cut it off before she said it, but how I knew what she was... Because how they, how they made it sound was... That she realized she had almost said the quiet part out loud and stopped herself, and then they said, you know, when you when you, when she paused, you could basically hear her thinking, and he got away with it too. And I'm like, I yeah, I I don't I don't know when this became okay. I don't I I I just I I don't, and I don't like the fact that everything that we knew growing up wound up being a lie because we were told. Oh, here it was. I found it. Okay. CNN commentator Ashley, Ashley Allison on OJ. He wasn't a social justice leader, but he represented something for the back, black community in that moment, in that trial, particularly because there were two white people killed in the history around how black people have been persecuted during slavery. So basically, OJ getting away with killing his ex-wife and some dude that was just returning her glasses was because of slavery. Yeah, it was it was all about re- it was all about retribution to the whitey. Oh my god. This is the world we live in now. This is why I live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> why why what if I want a different timeline? I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Cuz if I could, I would. Cuz somewhere there's a timeline where all of this is taken off and I'm a millionaire and I want to go find that one. I'm just saying. <laughs> I see John Schneider trusting, trending, and I think it's Bo Duke. It's not. <laughs> it's some baseball player. I was like, why is why is Bo Duke why, why is Bo Duke trending? Bo I was trending? hopeful. Oh, he's been getting in trouble lately, though. Too. <laughs> have you have you heard about his little controversy when Beyonce <laughs> released her country album? He's like, that's not country. That's her. Oh my God. What is the one? There's one song that every chick who makes a reel on Facebook is using now, and I fucking hate it. Texas Hold'em? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh my God. I hate that fucking song. And then she takes Jolene and turns it into some tough girl, like girl power anthem. No, that's not the song. That was never the song. It was a song about an insecure woman. And every woman has felt that. You just fucked up the song. Don't do that. You don't rewrite. I don't care if you think you're the queen. You are not Dolly. You you turned a classic into something it is not. All I'm going to say about the... Those are the only two things I've heard off the album, and I have zero interest in hearing anything else. Yeah. John Snyder actually got in trouble because during an interview, somebody asked him how he felt about Beyonce trying to break into country music. And he's like, she's not singing country music. She's walking around like a dog marking her territory. (gasps) Oh, my God. I love that. (laughs) He got in in almost as much trouble as uh, Tom Cotton for saying that 
they should throw the protesters off bridges because they wouldn't estate and they wouldn't do that shit. <laughs> I think it was Tom Cotton that said that. And neither do one of the dudes from okay. Marshall. <laughs> All right. I guess we've got to talk about this now. Do, what do we have to? I don't even know what this is, but from the way you said it, do we have to? <laughs> the freaking Ukraine and Israel bills and. Uh. All the freaking crap because, okay, there's people calling on Speaker Johnson to resign that I think are attention whores who I agree with sometimes, but I think ultimately are just there to, like, muck up the works for themselves. Matt Gates is, of course, one of them. MTG is, of course, another one of them. But there's people I truly like and respect that are now telling me to resign, and that's, like, Thomas Massey and Senator Rand Paul. Yeah. So that's really where we are. I mean, some of the stuff in this bill is just insane, if true. So, well, like, one of the things that's out there now from Greg Price, yeah. so here's a couple things from Greg Price. How's that? Um, one of them is if the president, that the president, after a certain period of time, wait a minute, I can't scroll up, which is weird. Let me go to his timeline. Um, and Greg Price is pretty good. So let me find this. Uh, this isn't just a Ukraine supplemental that's American last. The Taiwan supplemental literally includes a provision that allows Joe Biden to redirect those funds to Ukraine. Ooh, okay. Yeah, no, that's not good. Then Price finds out, remember how when we told the new Ukraine aid would be given in the form of a loan? Well, according to the just released bill, the president can forgive 50% of the loan after November of this year and the whole thing in 2026. <laughs> So, uh huh. So he's gonna and it gets even funnier. If the president cancels Ukraine debt, Congress can pass, wait for it, a resolution disapproving of it, which the president can also veto. Oh, boy. So basically, Speaker Johnson and these funding bills to get them passed because he needed Democrat support gave the power of the purse, which is reserved to the House of Representatives, to the president. All I'm going to say about that is if we still had McCarthy, none of this would be happening. <laughs> none of this would be happening, but I mean, I truly believe because McCarthy had some gravitas and agree with you that if we still had McCarthy, a lot of this would not be happening because McCarthy had the time in and the um poker pieces to be able to say no we're not doing that right um and he was being a little more strategic in how he was working around some of these things um johnson's just held hostage i mean nobody knew who he was until he became speaker of the house well to 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 steal a line from your former co-host what happened to johnson because remember he was all for you know getting rid of fisa etc until he got taken into a skiff Guarantee you they showed him his file because five minutes later, dude was all for FISA again. And I guarantee you that's part of the reason why some of the shifting is happening. And now he's trying to couch it because, well, I'm a Reagan Republican and we're supposed to show peace through strength, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And he's trying to say all the right things so he can keep enough of the, the, the war hawk Republicans on his side. When in reality, it's just because whatever blackmail they have on him, he knows about it now and he knows what's going to happen if he doesn't play ball. I'm telling you, the CIA and the FBI have been running this country for a very long time. Nobody wants to admit it. Nobody wants to talk about it. But it's the truth. It's just, it is what it is. I'm going to go back to adjusting my tinfoil hat now. I'm going to start putting it on my windows. Something. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, I mean, it, it's, I mean... It's the only thing that makes any sense because five minutes before he went into that room, he was, no, it, need, it, needs, it needs to be majorly changed or it needs to die. And then he got taken into a skiff and he's like, well, now I've seen the light and I understand why we need to use it and why it is the way that it is. And I'm like, yeah, no, Steve Day said the same thing. I was like, no, they showed you your file, fucker. <laughs> you didn't think they knew what they know and now you know what they know and now you're fucking scared. That's exactly what happened. And I guarantee you that happens more often than not because some of the biggest gung ho people that we've seen go into that cesspool come out little fucking pussy-whipped idiots. I mean, I mean, granted, 
Crenshaw, I'm pretty sure now that I've gotten used to how he operates, I'm pretty sure he was a CIA plant to begin with. But he was another one that you just saw go in like gangbusters and all of a sudden it's, I'm a robot and I'm going to do what they tell me. And it happens over and over and over again. It honestly started happening to Trump towards the end, which is one of the reasons why I don't want him back in there. Because he started going along with the party line because he was more worried about trying to get reelected than he was taking care of us. And that's one of my biggest complaints with him. Because he was the one that said, no matter what, I'm going to stand up for you. And then the what came and he folded like a fucking cheap suit. And that's why I don't really want him back in there. But if I have to choose between him and Joe Biden, then I know who I'm picking. Because I didn't want this either. And he may be milk toast on a lot of shit that I care about, but he's at least fiscally conservative and might be able to put the brakes on some of this stuff long enough for us to see if we can fix it or not. Because things have gone way too far the wrong way for way too long because they were able to, I mean, what little bit of progress we made under his under his presidency the first time was gone like the second he left office. And that was because his own party stopped him from doing a lot of things. So he had to do it through executive order. That's the part that I, I really still don't understand to this day. With as, mu- with as much as the Republicans scream about the border and everything else, Trump was actually trying to fix it and had control of everything for two years and couldn't get it done because they didn't want it fixed. Because why don't they want it fixed? Oh, I know why they don't want it fixed. The same re- the, the- Well, I don't think <clears> – like some of them are Chamber of Commerce Republicans and they want the cheap labor. The reason they don't want abortion fixed, the reason they don't want immigration fixed, the reason they don't want a lot of these things fixed is in, up until about five minutes ago, those were all wedge issues. Yep, and they were also major fundraising. They could issues. use them to fundraise off. They could use them. That's why there's some Republicans in D.C. who insist on talking about national legislation for pro-life because the pro-life basically pro-life movement basically became nationalized because of Roe versus Wade. And now it's just a grift. So it's just it's really a pack for the Republican Party. So the Lindsey Grahams of the world and the Ted Cruz's of the world rely on pro life money in DC. If if abortion is really not a DC issue anymore, where does that money go? It goes to state candidates. Right? Yeah. So they need the wedge issue in DC. Immigration until five minutes ago, until Joe Biden and and Secretary Mayorkas made it a true crisis that looks like an invasion to normal Americans, right? Yep. Immigration was a wedge issue. What I don't think some Republicans understand anymore, and like no Democrats seem to understand, is it's not a wedge issue. It's like a 70% issue. Yeah, no. 75% issue, I would say. Yeah. So, I mean, like you saw Biden, was it last week, talking to a group of Hispanics saying he was going to issue executive orders by the end of April to close the border and he got applause? Like, that's right. A lot of the Hispanic immigration at this point, you're talking to second and third generation Americans who have the same goals and aspirations as their American counterparts of every other color. Well, here's the the other part that a lot of – liberal news media don't want to talk about because there was an interview I saw not too long ago on Fox News and it was it wasn't Little Deucey, it was somebody else talking to them. But it was people that oh God, had, I love Little Deucey. People that had come across the border illegally and they were like, Well how do you feel about the open borders? They're like, Now that I'm here, shut the bitch <laughs> Did you Did you see Deucey with Kirby? I did. <laughs> I did. Is the president gonna come up with a new word? It's only Wednesday. He probably so will. Kirby says, "You mean other than don't?" Like, oh my god! Way to play. Everything's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Way to play into the tee off, Kirby. Way to play into the tee. And then Kirby and then, and then Deucey says yes, and Kirby says you'd have to ask the White House about that. Oh my god! It's well. I mean, well, there's it's, a horse. On the well, it's like Gavin Newsom gets asked the other day, you know, about the concerns of, you know, President Biden's mental fitness, things like this. And Gavin Newsom, being Gavin Newsom, who's getting really tired of having to address that question, just said, you know what, maybe he should take some brain pills or something. Oh, my God. Well, that's because Gavin Newsom wants to be the nominee. 
<laughs> so then he gets called out. He's like, like Gavin look, dude. literally had every expectation oh, they, that Dementia Joe would have fallen down the stairs of Air Force One by now, and he would be the nominee. Well, if they hadn't short said him, he would have had better odds. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> They hadn't put those hookah shoes on him. Jesus yeah. Christ, it's like watching him walk in rafts. <laughs> Short sets and boat shoes. All right, one more quick hit because we have to we have to talk about this real quick. So, Uri Ber- Berliner absolutely set fire to NPR on the way out the door, and it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the entire place is on fire. And now their new CEO is on record stating that the First Amendment may be a problem. <laughs> you know what? I heard the best quote today, because you know who dug all that shit up? Uh, I remember, but I can't think of their name right now. <laughs> Christopher Rufo. <laughs> uh, so the basic the basic <laughs> advice that, was it Steve Dace gave today, or Ben Shapiro? I can't remember. It's like, don't get on Christopher Rufo's bad side. <laughs> like, just don't. Uh, uh, yeah, Christopher Rufo's entire DL. Is filled with this lady's misstatements, and 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 he dug up that she was an intern or a, a whatever, a fellow for the freaking Atlantic Council. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, she's never been in journalism before, and somehow, after being at the Atlantic Council and and Wikipedia, she was CEO of Wikipedia. Wikipedia. She ends up as CPA, CEO of NPR. Yeah, because, you know, those things are connected. So you work for two, like, outright censorious organizations in the Atlantic Council and, and, and Wikipedia, and then you go to journalism? Wow. So I heard Tyrus say something today that I agree with because everybody's starting to shout defund NPR. I think with what they've done with the word defund, we need to say something different. So I'm just going to say this, privatize NPR. It doesn't need public funding anymore. There you go. There you go. No more government funding. It doesn't need it anymore. They, they have now proven that they are so far biased that they can't even handle the fact that somebody that's been with let, them for let, forever called them out for their bias. Let Pierre Omar fund it and you can hire all the folks from the Lincoln Project. You can absorb the bulwark. I was going to say, just roll the Lincoln Project and the bulwark in there and everybody will be fine. I know. Then you then you have, like, true diversity because you'll have some conservative journalists. <laughs> that was a pretty hard air quote there. I could even hear it from here. Just saying. <laughs> oh, could you? Because I had four fingers up for it, not two. <laughs> four. Oh, you, you were doing Dr. Evil-style do air quotes. But then it looked like, bye bye <laughs> So you were doing Dr. Evil-style air quotes. I like it. Oh, pointed fingers and everything with lots of emphasis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are just about to the end of the hour. Where can folks find you, dear? Uh, you can find me at Scott's Fire when I'm awake, and sometimes that's really odd times. Um, so some of my best work is done about 3 a.m. Um, <laughs> uh, I've other noticed because lately I go to sleep usually about two thirty. And write some interesting and caustic stuff. So if I do, I'll be sure to share it. Nice, nice. All right, folks, you can find me here every Tuesday through Friday at three p.m. to five p.m. Eastern, doing the Rick Robinson Show live on KLRM Radio. You can find me back here in just a minute. Uh, G actually just texted me, so I guess we're putting up a replay real quick. And then Lady the Red Wine will be live, and then Ordy and I should be your nightcap as long as he's feeling up to it. And then Friday night, I'll I'm going to fr- invade you and Ordy again. You are? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> no, I don't have to. No, Did you can. You sounded upset. No, you can. I didn't mean it that way. I, I was trying. I was, oh, I was, really? That's awful. I was feigning being upset because I'm supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to act like you're inconveniencing me or something. That was kind of. Oh, like, okay. That's, that's kind of where I was going with that. But anyway, so Wardy and I, and possibly Stacy, will hopefully be your nightcap. And then I'll be back uh, tomorrow, well, actually tomorrow night doing uh, Jen and Rick. And then Friday, sitting in for the sill on hiatus, Mickey Botors for He Said, She Said. And then I'm off till Sunday doing the America Off the Rail show, and then off again on Monday. When I'm not doing a lot, you can find me as a contributor on Twitchy.com, the executive producer of the Loftus Party Podcast.com, and an occasional contributor to both the Loftus Party as well as MisfitsPolitics.com. And starting on the 1st of May, 
uh, at least a daily, sometimes more than daily contributor to the Digital Beacon US, which is now officially launched as an ex exclusive property for now, because I'm tired of trying to figure out all the website shit. I'm done. We're just going to launch it exclusively on X for about a year and see what I can do with it and go from there, because I'm tired of, I'm, I'm tired of wrangling cats. But on that note, we're going to get out of here. Uh, again, there'll be a best of for the conservative combustion up here in just a second because I guess G has some technical issues in the Alabama location. So we'll have a replay up for you guys in just a minute. And then as far as I know, the ladies that are everyone after that. And as soon as I know for sure about Ordy, I'll let you guys know. Bye, everybody.